Hey everyone, this is Nick, and I already talked about de-googled Android ROMs in the past, specifically with Slash E, but this one was a very opinionated ROM, with its own design and its own approach on how to do Android and its launcher. So today it's time we look at another de-googled Android ROM, but this time way closer to vanilla, and it's called Yode OS. So let's look at what it brings to the table, how it compares to other de-googled ROMs, and how smooth this segue to today's sponsor is. Thanks to ProtonMail for sponsoring this video. ProtonMail is an encrypted email service based in Switzerland that is laser focused on protecting your privacy. And you probably already know that big tech like Gmail with its 2 billion users makes most of their money by harvesting all the data they can about you, including your emails, to build a profile about you and target you with ads. Well, ProtonMail believes that your email belongs to you. It protects you from email trackers, ads, spam, phishing, and provides all the features you need to quickly manage your email, unsubscribe from newsletters, manage your calendar, and more. It has nothing to hide, all its apps are open source and audited by security experts, and it was invented by scientists at the CERN, where the World Wide Web was invented. And ProtonMail uses end-to-end -end encryption, which means that not even Proton can read your email. You can use it on any device from anywhere, and you can sign up for free forever, and you'll get a free VPN, calendar, and secure cloud storage at the same time. You can upgrade anytime if you want more features and storage. If you're tired of being tracked everywhere, even in your inbox, and you want to break free from big tech, click the link in the description below and give ProtonMail a try. So, Yode OS, written with an accent on the last E because it's French. We French love to de-Google things, apparently. Yode is Android, but with all Google software removed. It uses Lineage OS as a base, but adds a built-in ad and tracker blocker that runs at all times locally on the device. They replace the default apps with privacy-focused ones, and they use FDroid and the Aurora Store to provide you with applications. So on paper, it's exactly the same goals and base as Slash E, except that Yode actually wants to give you Android, where Slash E gives you something closer to iOS. Yode sells brand new smartphones and refurbished ones that come with their OS pre-installed, or you can always install it yourself, although they don't officially support a lot of phones right now, with about 29 devices having installation instructions on their website. Here they provided me with a review unit that I have to send back after I'm done with it. It's a Pixel 5 from Google, and on paper it's a phone I could see myself using day to day. Right size, decent cameras, good performance, high refresh rate screens, on paper it's a phone I could see myself using, and since it didn't die on me during the trial period, I guess it's free of the various manufacturing problems Google encountered on this device. Well. Not completely free, as we'll see later. So let's look at how the ROM works. The first setup is just the exact same, as you might be used to on any vanilla or close to vanilla Android ROM. It lets you pick your Wi-Fi network, your language, enable notifications and location, and set up a fingerprint to unlock the device. You can also restore a previous backup, or just use the phone as is. After that, you get a Spartan first-run screen that lets you select your pre-installed applications, find out more about the Yode tracker blocker, and see news and information about the project. The ability to remove pre-installed apps is actually pretty cool. You don't have to do that after the first setup, and nothing is out of bounds. You can remove anything, so no one can accuse Yode OS of being bloatware. You get a list of categories, and you can just uncheck the apps you don't want or don't need, which is nice. It also comes with Micro-G, the open source implementation of Google Play services, and if you don't want that, you can also uncheck it. I'll keep it there to test how well it works. Now, the ROM itself will be super familiar if you've ever used a Pixel or a very stock Android ROM. On the Pixel 5, Yode OS 4 was pre-installed, and it's based on Android 13, so it's pretty much up to date. The latest security update was on January the 5th, 2023, which doesn't seem quite up to date yet. No further updates were available in the built-in updater tool. The Yode team told me that they provide security updates every two months for the stable channel and every month for beta testers because they want to make sure that they test that everything works right before publishing a new release. The default experience is as close to stock as can be. You have either the three-button layout of Android or the much better gestures, 
a dock of apps at the bottom, an app drawer by swiping up, and a few preset widgets like search, weather, and a few app shortcuts for the Yode tracker blocker, Yode related news, app stores, and settings. It also uses the Material U interface, and I know it's a controversial opinion, but I just don't like it. The contrast is bad, it just looks unappealing, everything is way too big with too much padding. I just don't like it. Bring back Holo, you cowards! The experience here is all super smooth and fast to use, at least on the Pixel 5. There are no slowdowns, and I didn't notice any crashes or bugs while using it either which is to be expected as it's pretty much stock Android with even less stuff running in the background, so it should perform even better than a Pixel with its default ROM. In terms of apps, Yode ships with a Firefox-based browser by default, which disables telemetry, trackers, and enables alternative search engines right out of the box, like Quant, Brave, Ecosia, Startpage, and multiple SERX instances. Quant is the default here, which isn't all that good since its results can be pretty hit or miss. The default email client is Pretty Easy Privacy, or PEP. It's a simple email client with an easy interface that adds end-to-end -end encryption capabilities to any mail account, and it's open source and tracker free. For maps, you get Magic Earth, which is also open source and uses OpenStreetMap. It has everything you might need, including directions, offline maps, and points of interest. It's not the most beautiful looking app ever, but it's fast and easy to use. The keyboard is open board, which is again open source. And I'll stop saying that now because all pre-installed apps are open source. So that keyboard is based on the Android open source project one and doesn't use any Google services either. It's a good keyboard with plenty of options to make it look and feel however you want. The camera app is Open Camera, which, while very powerful, has a terrible user interface and looks really bad. It also doesn't have all the built-in post-processing features that most phones' default camera apps will apply, which means your photos and videos will definitely not look as good using it as they would on the default ROM. Now that's an issue for all alternative camera apps and all Android ROMs that use them. You will never get as good a result as with the default camera application that gets shipped by your manufacturer. Finally, you get the usual Android open source project calendar, calculator, gallery, music app, phone dialer, PDF viewer, and you get Carnet for note taking, which is a clone of Google Keep that can be synced with Nextcloud if you want. The app selection is decent and is on par with what you would expect from a de-Google fully open source Android ROM. I still prefer the selection on slash E because they went out of their way to fork various apps, unify the user interface, make them look coherent, where here is just a set of mismatched apps. But you can replace anything with anything else if you prefer, so it's not really an issue. Now let's talk about the main draw of Yode OS, how it handles privacy. First, Yode is as de-googled as Lineage OS. They base their work on that, and they don't remove anything more than Lineage does. Where they differ is how they handle trackers and ads. Yode comes with a tracker blocker built in. This thing works using a man in the middle attack style. The OS intercepts all communications and requests that go out of your phone and blocks everything that's part of its block lists. And these block lists are collaboratively sourced and include a lot of ad block and tracker blocker related things. Now, don't worry, all of this happens locally on the device. Nothing is sent to a Yode server or third party or anything. Obviously, it's kind of the point. The system is based on Energized Protection, which is an open source project licensed under the MIT license. To complement this, there's a pre-installed app that lets you check how many requests you've blocked to how many recipients. You can see the list of applications and how many blocked requests they made. So you can get an indication of the apps that are actively trying to track you, and you can even see a map with the various countries your phone communicated with, how much data was sent, and to which server. It's a very, very neat feature. It means that you will not get any tracker or any ads running on anything. I saw zero ads during my experience with the phone, even inside of applications that will usually display them. Now, speaking of applications, Yode OS relies on two app stores. You get FDroid for all your open source app needs, and you get the Aurora store. If you don't know what that is, it's a very complete store that has basically everything the Google Play Store has, but that you can access without a Google account. 
You also can log in using a Google account and access your downloaded apps library on Google Play. Although it kinda defeats the purpose of using a de-googled Android ROM, I guess. Installing apps works very well, I encountered zero problems here. Where you will have issues is running apps that depend on Google services. I tried installing the YouTube app, and even though I had added my Google account to the account settings using Micro G, YouTube never opened, it crashed instantly. Other Google apps got me the same experience, like the YouTube Studio app. Stuff like Google Maps or Google Photos worked, but were unable to use the already added Google account in Micro G. After reaching out to the Yode team, they told me they have identified the issue, which seemed to be that Yode OS wasn't identified as Android correctly by Google, which made Google services dependent apps crash or fail to load accounts. The issue is fixed in the beta and will be patched in the next OTA release. And of course, you're probably not using a de-Googled Android ROM to run Google applications. But if what you need is tracking blocking and ad blocking capabilities out of the box, and you still need to run the occasional Google reliant application, then yet OS was not a seamless experience. If I compare that to my previous experience with Slash E, that specific ROM let me run any Google app I wanted, remembered my Google account, and the Micro G services implementation seemed to work just better. Now, interestingly, stuff like my banking app worked immediately on Yode, letting me use the phone as my secure device to authenticate purchases online, something that is usually blocked because the device doesn't pass safety net checks. Here, it all worked perfectly for me. So, how well does Yode OS compare to other de-googled Android ROMs? Well, compared to Lineage OS, it adds all these tracker and ad blocking capabilities. You could probably replicate that yourself on Lineage, but at least here, it's set up right out of the box. It gets updated with your system, and you get a nice little app to check how well it's working and how much data you've saved. Compared to something like Slash E, the comparison is a lot more interesting, because both ROMs don't really try to do the same thing. Slash E has more advanced privacy features, with the ability to scramble your location at the press of a button, and more complete privacy controls. But Slash E also deviates a lot from stock Android, with their own launcher, their own forks of open source apps, and generally an experience that will not appeal to everyone. Now, here again, you could use Slash E and replace the default launcher and apps with other alternatives. But here, you get stock Android out of the box without anything specific to do. Where these ROMs diverge is in terms of flexibility. I had a better experience with Slash E in terms of installing and using applications that need Micro G to work. On your day, even after logging in with a Google account, I couldn't access a lot of apps that need Google services. And sure, it will be fixed soon and it's probably a fluke right at the bad time. But for now, judging on my own experience, Yode just wasn't as smooth. And Yode supports a lot less phones than Slash E, which itself supports a lot less phones than Lineage OS. So I guess it all depends on what you're looking for here. If you want absolute stock and don't want to have to change the launcher or the default apps, and you don't plan to use any app that requires the play services, then Yode might be a good fit. It's definitely worth a try over Lineage. Although with the limited selection of devices, if you're a Google Pixel owner, you'll probably be better served by Graphene OS. If what you want is something that is more refined and will give you more flexibility in terms of applications, then something like Slash E will have a more usable setup with a better Micro G implementation, at least until the Yode OS team fixes the issues and releases an update. Also to be noticed, my review unit came with very, very noticeable OLED burn-in. I had some brown traces of the top bar and of some app UI elements on the top of the screen of the phone, as I'm sure you'll be able to tell watching the video. Now, the team told me that it was an error in quality checks and that they offered to replace it immediately, but since I wasn't going to keep the device anyway, it was just a review unit and it was a bit late, I just decided to record everything on this one. Now, for my personal use case, Slash E is still the better option because I need the YouTube Studio app to handle my channel and I would rather use the YouTube app than use the website. I also actually like the design and launcher of Slash E and I've never been a fan of Material U and the Pixel launcher. And I definitely plan to move back to Slash E once they support the Galaxy S21. Yode OS is an interesting ROM and the team was really quick to answer any questions and assure me that the problems I encountered would be fixed. But as of now, what I tried isn't as smooth as my experiences with Lineage OS or Slash E. It's definitely not bad, but it still needs a little bit of work to be more smooth, polished and refined. 
unlike this segue to today's sponsor, which is as smooth as can be. If your computer is due for a replacement and you want to install Linux on it, stop looking at Windows devices, devices made to run Windows. Click the link in the description below instead and get yourself a device that was made to run Linux. Tuxedo makes laptops and desktops that were made specifically for that purpose. And they have a big range of devices that should cover every price point and every need, whether you're looking for a small affordable laptop, a super high-end workstation, tower, NUC, whatever you need, they have it. All devices are super configurable, all laptops are openable, repairable, upgradable, including the SSD, the RAM, the battery, and even sometimes the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. So if you need a new computer and you plan to run Linux on it and you want to support Linux's development, click the link in the description below and get yourself something from Tuxedo. They are really, really good. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, you can always dislike and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really, really enjoy the channel, well, there are plenty of links in the description below to support it, like PayPal, YouTube membership, Super Thanks, or Patreon, or anything else. You know what to do. So, thanks for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!